How's it going guys? I'm your host Carbon Gaming. Welcome back to a very special Dragon Faber video and as you guys can tell from the title already, today's video is going to be the Seasonal Events Items Guide for Dragon Faber. So Seasonal Items are items that will come back at set points of time throughout the year and the items that I'm going to mention in this video may or may not be best in slot for you depending on what you already have inside of your inventory. If there are free options or other options available that uh, are available all year round then I will not be mentioning those items. Now keep in mind whatever is said in this uh, video is accurate at the time of this recording which is on 8th of July 2021 so the time at which you may be watching this video may have caused some of the information inside of the video to be outdated already as the game does have weekly releases but that being said this is still a very good guide for those of you guys who want a consolidated place to you know look at all of the seasonal items that you may want to get throughout the year so depending on what type of player you are whether you are a free player whether you are a pay to win player this guide is sure to have something for everyone so without further ado let us get started To kick things off, we have the month of February, and inside of February, you will find the Heroes Heart Day event, which is Dragon Fables Valentine's Day. And the first item that you may want to consider getting inside of Heroes Heart Day is the Indecent Proposal Trinket. Now, keep in mind, only Dragon Amulet holders will be able to use Trinket skills. So, if you're a Dragon Amulet holder, you can consider picking this up. You can get this item from Chapter Two, Chapter Three, Chapter Four, Chapter Five, or Chapter Eight. So, I'm going to jump into Chapter Two right now and show you guys where to pick up the item. It will be the same for all of the other chapters. Okay, so walk right up. To Big Daddy, click on shops, click on DA only shop, and this is where you can find the item. Okay, it is 200 dragon coins, so if you are a uh, low spender, then this may not be for you. You might want to save your dragon coins for something else, but this does come with a stun that lasts for two turns, so it's good for those tougher story bosses that don't really have immobility resistance. But if you're looking to use this for somewhere inside of the inn, then this may not be so useful for you because most of the inn challenge fights usually have uh, monsters with over 300 immobility visits so uh, 200 dragon coins honestly not a lot in my opinion so if you really need the two turn stun if you're struggling against a story boss then maybe you can consider picking this item up the next item I want to talk about, you can only get this item inside of chapter 8. So we'll go to chapter 8 right now, go to epilogue. And then you want to walk right up here to the sword, uh, remove sword inside of the stone. So you have to succeed on the roll in order to get it. You do get a plus 3 luck bonus every time, but you can just keep trying until you succeed. There's no penalty as far as I know, and you can just keep trying. Ho ho, we got 69. Okay, so after you succeed the roll, you'll unlock the shop here. And this is the one that you want to buy, the one for 400 Dragon Coins, Excess Caliber of Love. Okay, this is the best in slot Evil Resist weapon inside of the entire game. So uh, if you want to stack out Evil Resist against something like the Inevitable Equilibrium or something like the Unraveler, then you may want to consider getting this weapon for its Evil Resistance 13. Okay, very, very high. And uh, keep in mind, this does cost Dragon Coins, even though it's not Dragon Amulet only, but... Um, 400 dragon coins may not be for everyone, especially if you're not a heavy spender inside of, game, inside of the game. Now, the last item that I want to talk about is something that I actually do not have and did not keep. Okay, it's the one that you can get from this chapter, question mark, question mark, question mark, Adventure Friends. Okay, this is this year's release, uh, 2021's uh, Heroes Heart Day release. And inside of this, you can get the best in slot item for a level 1 best in slot back item for a level 1 so it is called the Aspen Vale backpack item okay and this item the stats are BPD 5 you have crit 5 MPM 5 bonus 5 and all resist plus 5 this is the best item that you can get for any level 1 player and even uh, beyond level 1 this will last you well up to like level 20 or level 30 even uh, okay anywhere until you get your wings uh, before you get your wings of the thousand flames okay this will probably be the best item that you can possibly get at lower levels so for NDA players or you are a low level player starting out and you just happen to you know cross this event in february then i'll definitely go ahead and pick this up okay there are a few different design variations to this item depending on the ending that you get for adventure friends but uh, all of that is cosmetics only it doesn't affect the items stats in any way shape or form and the next seasonal event that we have in february is valerius's birthday so for those of you guys who are not aware valerius is currently one of the two main uh, dragon fables developers right now okay 
Okay, and inside of his birthday shop, you'll find the box head helm. Okay, the box head helm is the best in stock evil plus good resist item inside of the game. So it is great for fights like the inevitable equilibrium as well as the unraveler EX. So I'll definitely recommend you guys to pick this up. For non Jagged Amulet holders, you should definitely pick up the free version as well because the free version is also the best in slot for NDAs for evil and good resist. For March, it's not really a seasonal event per se, but more of a seasonal item. Okay, so inside of the monthly March DC specials, you will find the Thor Sprout weapons. Okay, so the Thor Sprout weapons are a level 1 weapon that costs 250 Dragon Coins, which honestly is pretty cheap. But what you really want it for is not for its level or its stats, but more for its special effect. So with the new system, you can actually slot the weapon specials inside of uh, any weapon that you are currently using, which is really great. And the special, uh, which is a 5% chance on hit okay so this is great for classes or any skills that have a lot of hits in order to proc the special okay 5% chance on hit to inflict a 50% magic nature dot to the target for 5 turns so this is very good if you want to stack up dots on your target for that little bit of extra damage For the month of April, we have the Lucky Day event, and that is Dragon Fable's version of St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so there are three items that you want to get inside of Lucky Day. The first of which is the Ultimate Helm of Everluck. I do believe you need to go on some sort of scavenger hunt before you can unlock this item. Okay, so once you unlock it, okay, this helm is basically the best in slot for the luck stat so if for whatever reason you want to min max your luck stat inside the game then this is the helm that you want to get it only gives you 35 luck stat and nothing else but really this is just for players who want to min max their luck stat the next item that you may want to consider getting also comes inside of chapter 8 and that is the lucky hammer weapon okay so this is a dc item so you do have to spend a little bit of DCs. That being said, you only need to buy the lowest level version, which is the cheapest version, okay, for uh, 125 Dragon Coins. As opposed to buying the most expensive version, that is going to set you back by 400 more Dragon Coins. There is no need to buy the highest level version, simply because you are only using this weapon for its special effect and not for its damage or any other stats, okay? And a weapon special effect does not change uh, with its level so it will get the same effect uh, with a level 10 weapon special slotted and a level 80 weapon special slotted so might as well just get the cheapest one all right so for 125 dragon coins what this weapon special does is that it gives all of your crit damage extra 10% uh, extra 10% damage so you get extra 10% damage to all of your crit damage and this is great for builds that are uh, want to maximize your intelligence set, maximize your crit damage for any class that has a lot of high auto crit skills like pirate, like maybe your chaos weaver, your doom knight, all that kind of uh, very high damage hitting critting class, then this is definitely an item special that you want to slot. The next item that I want to talk about comes to us inside of Lucky Day Chapter 9, okay, and that is the Ghouly Days War. So you have to go ahead and beat the boss in order to get this. The boss is a pretty easy fight, it doesn't really have any special mechanics. Once you beat the boss, you will have a chance to get the Evil Incarnate Weapon. So the highest level version is level 85 only, but this is the best in slot and current strongest Evil Weapon inside the game. Not Evil, Evil, okay. Now, I have not seen any monster inside of the game that actually has a weakness to Ebel resist. But, uh, you know, just to put this out there, this is the current best in slot Ebel weapon. So, I'll definitely consider picking this up in case they decide to implement or introduce a monster that has the Ebel resist element inside of the future. So, the level 85 version, which is the higher lev uh, highest level version, gives you BPD 8. Okay, you have crit 12, luck 10, main stat 14, and bonus 12, and thus 82 to 102 Ebel damage. For May, we have the May 4th DC items, okay, keep in mind that these items are only around for usually one week, okay, and that has been the case for the past two years. So usually when these items uh, come out, there will not be any design notes on it, rather Valerus, okay, which is one of the game's developers, actually posts it on his Twitter when it comes out and it will usually be gone by the next release. So depending on when May 4th is during the time of the year, you may not even uh, get to see during the week's release if you only play on the weekend so if May 4th happens to be on a weekday then you'll probably want to get it during the weekday before next week's release comes around because I have missed this item two years in a row already okay apart from being a super nice looking weapon okay these weapons are level 1 and cost 400 dragon coins each okay they have a special effect that applies a 
50% okay uh, either darkness or light magic dot effect to the target for 3 turns and it is a 5% activation chance on hit so not as good as the Thor sprout weapons okay this item recent uh, these two star swords recently got nerfed but that being said if you want that extra little bit of damage on the monster then I'll definitely consider picking these items up for the month of June, we have Dragon Fable's birthday, and inside of Dragon Fable's birthday, you will be able to find the anniversary scythes shop inside of your book of law. So usually, you'll be able to find a new design for the scythe for that year, as well as last year's scythe. Okay, I do not know if scythes from the past years will eventually be returning, but you know, uh, until it comes out, that I'm going to assume that they will not be returning. Okay, so just pick up whichever one, uh, whichever design you prefer. Their stats are most of the time 99% similar. There may be one or two points in variation in terms of their damage and some may have the nature element, some may have the stone element but apart from that most of uh, the stats uh, it is the same. Okay so you're mostly looking at the design when it comes to choosing which dragon scythe that you want to buy or if you're a big pay to win player you should definitely go ahead and try and collect all the scythes. So there are two versions available usually the first of which is a non-dragon amulet version that costs 5,000 dragon coins. Okay this is tied for one of the most uh, expensive single dragon coin item inside of the game the other being the storybook collection when there isn't a discount okay so i would highly not recommend people to buy this version like there's no reason to spend 5000 dragon coins on it if you don't have a dragon amulet just buy a dragon amulet and if you have a dragon amulet you can get this version for only 500 dragon coins which is a 90% discount so definitely go ahead and get the 500 dragon coin version instead if you don't have a DA then get a DA and buy this item don't buy 5000 dragon coins just to buy the non DA version it's not worth it okay so this item okay it comes very close to being best in slot for eight different elements inside the game it is not best in slot for all of the eight elements but it is super duper close in terms of stats and in terms of damage so i'll definitely recommend everyone to go ahead and pick up this weapon and the best part about it is that it compresses eight different elements and uh these are your eight standard elements the eight most common elements that you will see inside of the entire game so if you want to save on your inventory space, then you can just have this one weapon compress eight different elements and it will work for you know a large variety of situations because the, uh, this weapon stats is so good and on top of that it is a scythe so uh, you can use it regardless of whichever build you are whether you're a warrior, whether you're a rogue, whether you're a mage, you can use the weapon. For the month of July, we have the July 4th monthly DC specials. That's Independence Day for you Americans out there. And inside of this uh, July 4th monthly DC special shop, you'll find the Unity weapons. The Unity weapons, okay, uh, similar to the Lucky Hammer and any other weapon uh, whereby you only want to use it special, you should definitely go ahead and get the lowest level version, okay. The lowest level version only costs 100 Dragon Coins and it has a 10% chance on hit to apply either Spirit of Fire, Spirit of Ice, Spirit of Water, Water, okay that's a fire ice or water dot respectively at random a 40% weapon damage dot effect to the target for five turns so if you just want that little bit of extra damage then you can go ahead and get this weapon keep in mind that each of these uh, weapons special dot effects can only be active uh, at one time so you cannot stack up and have all three different dots you can only have one of the, uh, this weapons dots at any one time for the month of October, we have the Moglowin event, which is Dragon Favors version of Halloween. So you want to go inside of the latest uh, chapter over here, and uh, after you have completed all of the quests, you will have access to the Croft Town. And once there, there are quite a lot of items that you want to consider getting for Moglowin event. First of which is the Pumpkin Lord armor. Okay, and by Pumpkin Lord, I mean the Evolved Pumpkin Lord armor. So you'll only be able to get the Evolved Pumpkin Lord armor after you have fully trained the Pumpkin Lord armor. There is no reason to use the Pumpkin lot over the evolved pumpkin lot and the evolved pumpkin lot armor is a very strong armor with dot effects with uh, buffs with debuffs with two uh, final skills with a damage reflex skill a shield on a very short cooldown and it's basically in my opinion one of the best armors if not the best armor an NDA can have you guys can go ahead and check out my free to play in series where I did a lot of challenge fights using the uh, evolved pumpkin lot armor simply because of how good it is okay so for NDA players I'll definitely recommend you 
you guys to go ahead and get and uh, tr fully train up this armor during Mogloween and use it for some of the challenge fights inside of the inn. Next up, I'm going to talk about the helms, okay? So the mob helms, okay, you can get from treats, okay? Each one, uh, you have to causes 300 candy, so you have to upgrade them slowly one by one. And for NDA versions, you want to get the level 70 ones because this is the highest level version NDA can get. And you definitely want to get uh, all of these helms, whether you're an NDA or a DA player. For NDA, the level 70 version is the best in slot for uh, nature and energy visits for brave uh, Sir Robin's helm. For the Baron's Helm, it is best in slot for Bacon and Fire Resist. Okay, Baron's and Baroness Helm is essentially the same. It's just a male version for Baron and a female version for Baroness. And Death Arrow's Fearful Helm is the best uh, in slot for Silver Resist. Okay, at 13 Silver Resistance. Okay, next up for... DA players, you want to get the level 90 version. Okay, the level 90 version, okay, uh, gives you two more resists. Okay, this is only for DA players. So DA players, uh, Brave Sir Robin's Helm will be your best in slot for your nature plus energy resist. Baron's and Baroness Fear Fearless Helm will be best in slot for your Bacon plus Fire Resist. And for Death Arrows, Fearless Helm will be best in slot for your Silver Resist. So I'll definitely go ahead and uh, get and upgrade all of these helms up to the max level during the month of October. Next up, we have the Franken Blade weapon. So the Franken Blade weapon is the best in slot disease weapon, okay, uh, for level 90, which is for uh, DA players only, unfortunately. So Franken Blade 79 to 107 disease. Uh, decent stats over here and the artwork, uh, really nothing to shout about, but still, best in slot disease weapon. Not a lot of monsters in the game have weakness to disease resistance, but you know, if you want a best in slot weapon for every single element, then you definitely need to go ahead and pick this up. And the last item that you may want to consider getting, this is uh, more targeted towards the NDA players or free to play players, is the Franken. No, it's the Harvest Edge weapon, sorry. So the Harvest Edge weapon at level 90, this uh, is for NDAs as well. The Harvest Edge weapons is the best in slot nature weapon for NDA players out there. Uh, since NDA players ca are unable to get the Jade Cleaver of the Lone Tree currently, so I'll definitely go ahead and pick this up if you're an NDA player. Level 90 weapon and is one of the few level 90 weapons that NDAs actually have access to. For November, we have the Thanksgiving event, which is basically Dragon's Fables version of Thanksgiving. And inside of this event, there are two items that you may want to consider picking up. One of which is actually only a temporary item, so you can't really pick it up permanently, but you can use it for a bunch of challenge fights during this time of the month. And that item is the Electric Hair item. You can get this inside of Chapter 8. Okay, uh... Either one will get you the uh, temporary item, but I will go for food fight because it equips the item immediately once you go inside the quest. And once you're inside the quest, you can just teleport back to hometown to get the item equipped. And this is the best in slot for both darkness as well as light resist. So this is a really good uh, helm if paired with something like your death knight armor. Let's say you're facing something that deals a lot of heavy darkness and light damage like uh, the... Uh, Argus Skywatcher inside of the uh, Dominion of Dreams in Challenge Fight, then this is certainly an item that you want to pick up. 20 Darkness and 20 Light Resist, no other item in the game even comes close. So I'll definitely pick this up during this month if you're struggling with that Challenge Fight. The next item that you can consider getting inside of the uh, Thanksgiving event actually comes from us inside of Chapter 12, and that is the Bonehead Pet. Okay, so the Bonehead Pet okay uh comes inside of act 2 you have to complete act 2 in order to get it it has a super duper low chance to drop but uh what is good about this pet is that it has two attacks okay one of which is a your standard one hit of 100 percent melee darkness damage nothing special but its second attack heals five percent of your max hp deals three times hundred percent melee darkness damage for a total of 300 percent damage and uh causes a darkness breath effect which is minus 10 bonus to your target for two turns that is a lot for one attack but that being said its healing is outclassed by your baby dragon when it is fully fed and fully trained in terms of protection and it's also outclassed by your twilly gas or Twilly pet, sorry, uh, which you can just invite for free inside of Falcon Reach. And honestly, minus 10 bonus isn't really going to do anything at the higher levels, but this is just a 
I would say a decent pet that a lot of people want to farm for. It's more of an end game item. Okay, it's a good to have, not a must have in my opinion. And because this pet has such a low drop rate from the quest, I will not recommend you to actually farm for it. There are better pets that you can use out there that honestly requires much lesser work and just work way better than uh, the bonehead pet. But if you're a collector, then you can go ahead and farm for this pet. And finally, for the last month of the year, we have the Frostville Seasonal Event, which is Dragon Fable's version of Christmas. So to start things off, there are two classes that you want to get. The first of which is the Frost Moglin Armor. Okay, class. The Frost Moglin Armor you can get from inside of Chapter 3. Let's go to X6. Okay, Frost Moglin Armor, just walk right up to Maya Armor Shop and you can train armor, buy armor and wear your armor here. So the Frost Moglin Armor, the female version, is one of the top tier warring classes. You guys should definitely go ahead and check out my Dragon Fable warring guide here. So the Fruitcake Break skill, very fast, very high damage, auto crit and is fantastic for warring but this is only the female version so this is the only reason i'll consider that you want to get the armor and train the armor that being said this is the only time of the year whereby you can fully train up the armor so i'll definitely go ahead and do so if you haven't done it already now the next armor that i want to talk about is the tox slayer armor the tox slayer armor is a decent armor that has very high uh, burst damage in terms of fire damage so i'll definitely go ahead and get it and i've used it in several of my challenge videos as well okay so for tox layer armor you can get it inside of chapter 6 chapter 9 or chapter 10 so i'm just going to go inside of chapter 6 to get it and you want to walk to uh walk to right and then you want to walk right up to storm over here now you can get this armor you can equip this armor when it is not a uh, frostville period from uh raw lift inside of oak law keep but you can only train this armor during this period that being said this armor does not have all 14 skills okay so it is quite easy to fully train out the armor and this is the only time of the year where you can fully train up the armor so i highly advise every one of you guys to go ahead and train up the armor during this time of the year if you have not done so already now moving on to items and the first item that you want to consider getting you can get inside of chapter one act two so walk right up to fizzle over here Frostville War Shop, okay, and any of these three weapons, okay, you want to mainly get them for their special, obviously not for their levels or their stats, okay, their special has a five, uh, has a chance to heal you for 5% of your HP, and this is great for slotting inside your weapon special if you have not uh, unlocked the Blade of All yet or any of the other healing uh, weapons inside of the game. Alright, now next item that you want to talk about is the Cobalt Lights weapon. Okay, so the Cobalt Lights weapon, you can get them inside of Act 9, Act 16, and Act 33 from Chapters 4, 6, and 10 respect respectively. Okay, so we'll go inside Chapter 4, Act 9, and I'll show you guys where to go ahead and get the Cobalt Lights weapon. So walk right up to Maya Gift Shop, and here you can buy the Cobalt Lights weapon. The highest level version is only level 80, okay, and uh, similar to the... Candy weapons, this weapon special has a chance to heal you for 5% of your HP on a successful hit. And uh, this is great for non-Dragon Amulet holders. As non-Dragon Amulet holders, you cannot use weapon specials. You cannot slot weapon specials, but you can equip the weapon and use it special. So this is probably the best silver weapon for non-Dragon Amulet holders. So I highly recommend you guys to get it. For Dragon Amulet holders, again, if you have not unlocked your blade of all other healing weapons inside the game, you can go ahead and get this weapon as well. It's still a decent silver weapon too all right now the next item that i want to talk about will be the magical frost veil cloak okay you can get this item inside of chapter uh chapter 5 2010 presents and here it is the level 80 version is da only uh in fact all of the versions of this are da only so it's only for dragon amulet holders but the reason why i want to get this item is that it is the best in slot ice resist item okay if you're not including all resist all right so if you want a best in slot ice resist item say for maybe the frelma challenge fight but at the same time you also don't want to impede your own healing with all resist then this is definitely the item that you want to get okay plus 14 ice resist the next item that you may want to consider getting is nyx toasty cape and you can get this from chapter 7 act 22 so once we load up inside here, Wing Darkness, and you can click on the next Cape DC shop. Now, this is a DC item, so again, it may not be for everyone. If you're a pay-to-win player, you can consider getting this. This is the best in slot 
immobility resistance cape inside of the entire game and that being said if you do not have your wings of the unraveler yet then you can consider getting this cape as well as it gives plus 10 or resist and has fantastic stats to boot so uh, if you are unable uh, to get the wings of the unraveler because you are unable to beat the challenge fight for whatever reason or uh, for some weird reason you can't or haven't been able or lucky enough to go ahead and grind out the wings of the thousand flames yet then the next toasty cape is a very strong defensive choice for a back item as well that gives 10 or resist to your stats next few items you can get from inside of chapter 9 and the first of these items you can get inside of act 29 okay over here and that is the dragon blazer weapon okay so the dragon blazer weapon uh it does 30% more damage to dragons and 15% more damage to reptilian as part of its special. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way you go. As long as you do the quest for Sepulcher, for Sand or for Zorbeck, you will be able to get a chance to get the Dragon's uh, Blazer weapon. Obviously, get the highest level version and NDAs have a slightly lower level version. I believe it's only level 70 for NDAs. But nonetheless, it is still a really good free-to-play version Uh for uh, extra damage against dragon kind if you do not have the dragon coins to buy the dragon knight set then this is honestly your next best alternative all right the next item that you want to consider getting comes to us in sub act uh, 31 okay so there are two items here okay first of which is the frost moglin slayer weapon walk right up to Cicero moglin shop slayer set okay and the frost moglin slayer blade okay this uh or blades okay or the staff okay depending on your build you can uh, get one whether you're a mage warrior or rogue okay so this is the best in slot good resist for weapons okay at 14 so definitely go ahead and pick this up this does cost dragon coins though so do keep that in mind so you can go ahead and pick this up if you need extra good resist for the fights that i mentioned earlier like the unraveler or like the uh, inevitable equilibrium fight if you just want to stack good resist then this is your best choice all right the next item that you want to get here this one is a little bit more complex okay so you have to walk uh right two times okay and then walk left one time walk left another time and walk right up to a shendo over here so a shendo here click on a bit unbeatable acryloth let's go and then you have to fight any of these challenge fights okay honestly just do the simplest one and then you will be able to get a two fragment uh miscellaneous item okay so for the two fragment item okay uh so get me out of here let's go to home let's go to the travel map as to how to use this item i'm going to show you guys right now you need to go to sherwood forest so let's go to kingdom of green guard magus wood sherwood forest over here and then you want to go to Rosewood, which is tree right. One, two, three, go up two times. One, two, and then you want to go to your uh, two fragments. Okay, two fragment. You from here, go left one time, up one time, left again, up again. And then you talk to Igor over here. So click on shops, click on two fragment. You will be able to get the two fragment and get the necklace. So uh, in order to open the necklace shop, you need the two fragment to buy the level 30 necklace, uh, the hard scale necklace. And then once you get that version, you can click on necklace merge over here to merge into the higher level versions. The hard scale necklace is the best in slot for fire, energy, and stone. That's right guys, best in slot for 3 different resistances and that's what makes this necklace so very good and uh, it's only level 80 and both DAs and NDAs can get this item so I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and get this item during the Frost uh, Veil period if you haven't done so already. The next item are two pets that you can get inside of Frostville Chapter 11 2016 presents. You need to complete both Interlude 1 and Interlude 2 in order to get the items to merge the pets. Okay, so Interlude 1 gives you the next Snowmancer pet which does darkness damage and Interlude 2 gives you the Pella Chili pet which does light damage. Okay, so both of these pets, what's good about them is that their regular attack is 7 hits of 20% damage for a grand total of 140% damage and the high hit count is really good against monsters like... Uh, the Drahatia uh, monster inside of the inn at the edge of time okay and it also it also has a second attack which heals you for five percent of your hp that happens quite regularly so all in all these are pretty good pets to pick up for both the hit counts as well as the healing 
This next item you can get inside of Frostville Chapter 12 and click on 2017 present. So you obviously want to get the highest level versions. This is for Dragon Amulet holders only unfortunately and that is the Frost Mowgli Knight's Helm as well as the Frost Mowgli Knight's Cloak item. Okay, So this modifies your Frost Mowgli armor. It doubles the chance to proc the Frostville Spirit on your uh, Spirit Burst skill. Honestly, it doesn't really do a whole lot, but you know, uh, for an artifact that modifies your armor skills, I would consider picking this up just for the sake of it, even though there's really no uh, use for that skill uh, at all, because the only reason why you'll be wanting to use the Frost Moglin armor is really for warring, and for warring, you don't really use the Spirit Burst skill, but I'll just pick this up for the sake of it. Alright, so the last item that you may want to consider picking up inside of Frost Veil comes to us from inside of Chapter 13, Act 37. Okay, so this is the Snow Peak War, and you will have need to complete the quest as well as the boss fight in order to get the materials to merge into this weapon, and that is your Ancient Frost Moglin weapons. Okay, so uh, this weapon here, what's good is that it is the current best in slot for Ice Resist for a weapon. Okay, it gives you a whopping plus 15 Ice Resist, and on top of that is special... Uh, this is an on-hit special. It can inflict a plus 10 health resist to your enemy for 10 turns. This is great for monsters that have a lot of healing like Drahatia and also your Yuma. Okay, so I'll definitely go ahead and pick up these uh, weapons if you want to deal with uh, high healing monsters inside of the in challenges or if you just need some very high resistance for maybe like the Frelma fight inside of the in challenge as well. So that's it guys, my Dragon Fable Seasonal Events Items Guides uh, for Dragon Fable. Let me know what you guys think of the guide down in the comments below. Did I leave out anything? Please feel free to leave that down in the comments below. I'll be sure to read through all of your comments. And of course, uh, last but not least, huge shout out and thanks to all of the writers over on the Battle On forums uh, because that is where I reference all of my information from. So if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you guys would like to see more such future content. Till the next time, I'm your host Carbon Game. Peace out.